adaptation is a process of change that takes place over time. These changes usually occur over millions of years through another process called natural selection. In natural selection, the shape or the function of a body part that works really well in a particular environment is kept and passed down to the offspring. The parts that don't work so well, they change over time into another form um, that works better and helps that species become more suited to their environment. In this video, we're gonna look at the different ways fish are adapted to thrive and survive in their watery habitats. We're gonna be looking at some species that are commonly found in the rivers, creeks, streams, and the open waters of the Chesapeake Bay. The shape of a fish's body and fins determine its speed and maneuverability. The more streamlined shapes are faster and most suited for fish that swim constantly. The slower shapes are more suited for short bursts of speed, sharp turns, and quick stops. When you take a look at their tail, or caudal fin, that's their main thruster. The more like a letter V that tail is, the faster the fish's speed. The first fish I want to show you is this white perch. This is a really nice sized fish. The white perch are pretty common around here. Um, we find them year round. And um, you can see some really good features on this fish. Number one, this perch has a big giant, whoop, a big giant mouth and can swallow pretty much anything it wants to eat. So that fish likes to eat uh, grass shrimp, minnows, small crustaceans, things like that. Um, another cool thing about the white perch is it's shading. It's got the counter shading. Again, it's, uh, the colors allow it to camouflage in two different habitats. So if you're looking down, you're looking down into the water, this fish is gonna blend um, with the darker water or the darker bottom. And if you're looking underneath the fish, the fish is blending in with the light coming in from the sky. So um, that's the counter shading. We see in a lot of these fish we're gonna check out. These white perch are commonly found in the rivers, creeks, and streams. They, they can deal with some salinity. You'll find them in different parts of the bay. But the thing about them is they don't have a really big migration, so they tend to stay in an area. So this one is a couple years old. And the cool thing about that is if this fish has been living in Meredith Creek for three to four years and it looks this good and this healthy, that's a really good indicator of the water quality or the health of the water here, that it's able to support this fish for so long. And look at that dorsal fin. That is a really spiny dorsal fin. So that's gonna make it really hard for predators to eat them or even if a bird comes um, with its talons to grab them, those, those are pretty sharp, pretty pokey. So that's a really, really good survival technique. And again, I just wanna look at the mouth of this fish. The, the younger ones, the younger white perch tend to eat insects, small crustaceans, small fish. And then as they get bigger, they eat bigger things. They eat bigger fish or crabs. And some of the really big perch um, will eat little, little menhaden or little little uh, forage fish. It's a real pretty fish. All right, put your back in there. So I want to take a quick minute and check out this spot. Uh, if we look at this little guy, he's got a false eye spot. That's where he gets his name, and that's to confuse predators. He's got some striping, and that's going to blend in with the light coming down through the water. His mouth is turned downward. So he feeds, it's pretty big, it's a pretty big sized mouth, and he feeds down on the bottom slurping up worms um, and little shrimp and amphipods, things off of the bottom. He's dark on top and light on the bottom, so again that's that counter shading that's going to help him blend into two different environments. And he's got a spiny dorsal fin and he's got not too much of a fork tail, he's got a little powerful tail and that's going to keep him down on the bottom 
um, while he's looking for those worms and those things that he wants to eat. We're watching here a young American eel, and I can tell this is a fairly young one because she's little. She's about maybe five or six inches long, and when they're fully grown, they can be close to five feet long, uh, but you can watch she's been in and out of that oyster shell a couple of times. She's looking for a place to hide. Eels are super cool. They are actually a catadromous species, meaning that they live their life in fresh and brackish water, and then they go out to salt water to breed. Unlike things like salmon, which do the opposite and are anadromous fish. Uh, so all of the American eels will go out to the Sargasso Sea to breed. And then the babies will make their way back up streams and rivers. They're mostly nocturnal. They like to hang out down near the bottom. Um, they're fairly tolerant of uh, low oxygen conditions and things like that. They're super slippery. Um, and I just love watching the way they move. I have another little spot here. I wanted to see if you could see the lateral line. Uh, it's a um, kind of like a line of pores that go along the trunk down to the tail. And that is an external sensory organ um, that allows them to detect vibrations in the water. And that helps them feeding and avoiding predators, finding their food and avoiding predators. The perch, you can sometimes, oh, yeah, if I tilt them like that, you can really see that lateral line system. So that's an extra sensory organ that they have, or system. These guys are a favorite food of some of the other fish that we've seen. This is a little juvenile menhaden. Um, they're in the herring family, but this little fish, you can see it's very silvery. It's got that counter shading. It's also got a false eye spot. This type of fish uh, is a type of fish that a lot of other things depend on for food. Uh, they're a very oily fish and they're a really good source of protein for a lot of different birds and fish in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. There are a variety of ways that fish have adapted for feeding. So you can learn a lot about a fish by looking at the position, the size, and the strength of a fish's mouth or the strength of their jaws. So by looking at this little menhaden's mouth, if I can get him to open it, we can figure out where in the water column he's feeding and what he's feeding on. So his mouth opens straight forward, so he's headed right towards whatever he's eating, and it opens pretty wide, and he is a planktivore. He's got these gill rakers inside there, and the Gill rakers are like little combs and they're going to comb the plankton out of the water. Fish are designed to feed at different levels of the water column and to eat different types of food. So the fish mouths come in a variety of sizes, shapes, and orientations. If we take a closer look, we can learn a great deal about what and where a fish eats by looking at its mouth.